Hi, I'm going to be demonstrating the Taraz.com six channel transmitter and six channel receiver. This particular wireless relay system can go about a half a mile line of sight about or about a kilometer. I've tested it up to 3,000 feet and it worked just fine line of sight. I've put some in a building before and about 70 yards across the building uh, with multiple walls in between, it worked just fine. Um, it does have six channels, so, and channels can operate simultaneously. The system is addressable, so if I change this dip switch or change this dip switch, it no longer works. I'm just gonna pull off this here. Change, change dip switch number one. I did not change dip switch number. I'm just gonna change dip switch number one. There we go. And it no longer works. I put it back. Okay, so this, the system can be powered up two different ways. It can uh, accept a uh, wired terminal power input and right now we're at 24 volts we can actually go all the way down to well a common one is 12 volts of course and it still works and we can go all the way down to even 5 volts and yeah, that's good enough and the system still works even multiple ones how you pick power supplies is just based on what you're trying to power up. Um, as I'm trying to work with this device that has a minimum of 7 or 8 volts, of course I'm going to pick a power supply like this. Uh, nice LED driver, 12 volt power supply to, to power something like that up. However, you can alternately power these up with a USB cable. Uh, just a just a standard one amp cable, make sure it's five volts, one amp, and it is the USB Mini A. So it's a little bit more square. It's not your typical Android one. It's the one that's a little bit bigger than the Android, and it uh, uh, outputs five volts, minimum one amp. Now I've hit the LEDs here with a little bit of Sharpie so they're not so bright into the camera. Um, a good uh, demonstration of this is I have an old panic button here from uh, a, a alarm job I put in a bank years ago. I was replacing switches and I kept one. I have a, a strobe here. I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in. Strobe into the relay system. Six channel relay. We're on channel number one. And I have that panic switch connected to channel one. Now, it's not going until I press the button here, and there it goes. Now, this would be great for a system like maybe in a state building or a government building uh, where you have a security guard on staff, and uh, as a silent alarm, you could know exactly something was happening. Um, these relays and this transmission system, it would be great for... Uh, monitoring power. So if say you had a 12 volt system that you wanted to monitor 24 hours a day um, and if if power like let's say a feeder at a zoo okay so um, if, if the feeder doesn't work then the zoo uh, the, then the animals of course suffer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of simulate that. I'm going to say hey look the the power for the feeder is working, but if power is dropped, then the then the system cuts off, and now you have an alert. And this would you could probably put some type of siren or or just an indicator light on a on a panel so the maintenance mechanics could uh, know when that was happening. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug that so it's not in your face so much. And again, I'm just since these relays are Form C relays, meaning that they 
they have a normally they have a common a normally open and a normally close so you so your relays can act as a constant on constant off and of course change status once the input uh, these these relays are rated for 250 volts AC 10 amps 30 volts DC 10 amps uh, so pretty powerful little relays and you got a lot of them. So yeah, you could take a 120 volt system uh, Say you have a barn outside and you put a toggle switch over here and you want to be able to turn on and off the lights in the barn Using this device. Well, that's certainly very easy application. You put a toggle switch here or even just your basic light switch from um, From Home Depot or Lowe's you could connect that there Connect a 120, 120 volt lamp to this uh, relay here, and when you press the button, the lamp would just go on. Um, now the inputs on this particular board require voltage, so um, this isn't a dry button. This is actually a, a button that's pulling voltage from a um, power source over there. Uh, so again, these inputs. Uh, can trigger as low as all the way down to 2 volts and all the way up to 24 volts. Don't exceed 24 volts. So you don't want to try to measure a 120 volt system here. Uh, if if you're trying to measure and, and keep track, put a put an intermediary, intermediary relay, there we go, uh, in between and your relay could trigger this device here. Um, as you can see here, I, I've selected to um, power this up just by providing a small jumper to this light's um, positive uh, signal. Uh, the, the negative is already connected to the power supply, so it's it's a very simple system. Um, if you're going direct like that, uh, pick, pick a power supply to power this up between 5 volts and 24 volts for whatever device you're trying to power up. Again, it's six channels. The nice thing about a board like this is because it is addressable, you could have multiple transmitters talking to a single relay. You could have multiple uh, relay, or I'm sorry, multiple transmitters talking to multiple receivers, or multiple transmitters talking to a single receiver, or multiple receivers receiving in, uh, signals from a single transmitter. It's, 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 Whatever your mind could imagine, it could happen between this. One more thing I want to mention is there's a really nice part of these input boards. Each one of these inputs is protected by an optocoupler. So if you overcharge the input, chances are you're, you're going you're gonna to zap uh, a diode or the op optocoupler itself. You probably won't zap the programming chip. So you could resolder in a new optocoupler you could send it in for repair it, it doesn't mean that your board is going to be devastatingly gone um, really great feature of this is just the nice optocoupler protection for the input circuits one thing I wanted to mention here I actually cut the tape um, is that if you are Arduino savvy so you know how to program Arduino um, these are just Atmega 328Ps, so you can actually pull them off. And if you ask Taraz.com for an input-output chart, they will provide that for you. I mean, you could sit there and meter it and figure it all out on your own. Uh, however, they will do that. So if you wanted to do something different than what's here, then then just ask, and they will provide you a... Um, a chart so again they they've got the resets for the 328 P's you'll see that this light flashes here whenever it's reset uh, that's a clear indicator that the microprocessor is working same thing over here and again this is super easy if you have a if you have an Arduino setup then all you got to do is uh, put this back on your Arduino Uno um, program them replace them and you're ready to go. All right, thanks.